next phylum we are going to discuss here is about phylum mollusca let me tell you that these organisms are also eosilomates they have the true body cavity not on this point to go with that they are unsegmented triploblastic and most important point soft bodied animals see molluscans are generally regarded as soft bodied animals you know i use the term molluscans the animals belonging to the phylum mollusca are referred to as molluscans as we had uh, said for example the animals belonging to annelida phylum are referred to as annelids the animals belonging to arthropoda phylum are referred to as arthropods in the similar manner no the animals belonging to the phylum mollusca are referred to as molluscans these are soft bodied shelled animals their body is covered by shell remember this is also important these two points okay so they are eosilomates they have the true body cavity they but their body is not divided into segments as we found in case of annelids and arthropods just concluded phylums so we cannot find that segments here triploblastic they have all the three body walls that is the outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and the inner endoderm so they are all higher in vertebrates now soft bodied to go with that their body is covered by shell animals belonging to mollusca are referred to as molluscans here remember the scientist aristotle in fact he applied the term mollusca for the very first time he used this term to the cuttlefish of aegean sea he is the first person who used the term for one of the organism that is the cuttlefish which was seen in aegean sea so there he said that organism as a you know mollusca okay so he is the first person then followed by him there are other you know scientists like we have johnston who in fact is responsible for coining the term okay so he, he is responsible for coining the term in fact what we call mollusca okay so this is this phylum is the second largest see already we have discussed that arthropods arthropoda phylum is the largest phylum among all the you know animal phylums the second largest is the molluscan uh, molluscans so where we can find approximately around 85000 species here it is very less than compared to arthropoda phylum yet you know 85000 is a very big number so this is the second largest phylum and to go with that the study of mollusca is called as the malacology and the study of their shell is called as conchology so these are few introductory points with respect to the invertebrate phylum that is mollusca next moving on to their general characteristics that is of the phylum mollusca let us move on with the first that is their habitat so mostly these molluscans are marine that means they are very well adapted to the salt waters or the sea here many examples can be taken say we have here chiton okay octopus sepia 
and so on. These are all adapted to the marine waters. Few can also be found in the fresh waters, but not as much as marine waters. Okay. So here you give examples as pila. Okay. Then unio. Fine. And uh, very few will be terrestrial, as we all have seen. For example, land snail. Okay. So these are the habitats, the dwelling place of these organisms. To go with this, if we talk about their habit, that is their behavior. Okay. So they are generally free living, or they can few forms, not all, very few forms can be parasitic. That is, they require host for their survival. Say, example you can give here is Glochidium larva. Okay. So, but remember, most of them are free living. Okay. Very, very few, very, very few, we can find them as parasites. All right. Moving to their body symmetry, they are generally bilateral in nature. They show the bilateral symmetry. So when I say bilateral symmetry, let me tell you their body is divided into two equal halves from the plane passing through the center only in one direction. Okay, but few can be secondarily they can show. Okay. Asymmetry. Remember, they show asymmetry because few of the forms they have, you know, uh, torsion during their growth. Okay, that is after you know they are fully grown, uh, or torsion can be seen in their body. So, which make their body instead of bilateral as asymmetry. Okay, so that's why not all, but very few exceptions are there here. Okay, so. Remember, this is the major symmetry which is shown by the molluscans. That is bilateral symmetry. Okay. Then moving on to their body form. Say, I have already told you that these organisms, you know, are unsegmented and soft-bodied, possessing the shells, and their body is differentiated into head. Okay, followed by the visceral hump, and they have muscular foot. So let me repeat: head, visceral hump, and muscular foot. That is their differentiation of body. Dear students, next we have mantle or pallium. See, this is also one of the important structure which can be seen with respect to mollusks. So, it is a thick layer of the body wall or rather we can also represent it as the thick layer of the skin. So, this secretes, you know, calcareous shell or we can say this is important for the formation of exoskeleton in the case of the organisms belonging to the phylum mollusca. Most of these organisms have, okay, we can just say the skeletal system, okay. So, almost organisms here have the exoskeleton, the skeleton which is situated outside the body, okay. So, Say for example, you know, uh, most of the most of them have. Say for example, we have the class cephalopods. So this class does not have exoskeleton. In fact, under this class, all the organisms have internal skeleton. Okay. So let say for example, sepia and lolico. So, which show 
the skeletal uh, system inside their body which is much different when compared to the all the other classes of the molluscans e remember except the class cephalopods all the other classes have exoskeleton okay so now see you are well familiar with the octopus okay which belongs to this phylum they in fact do not form the calcareous shell at all they don't form the calcareous shell at all or the exoskeleton cannot be seen generally uh, with respect to the organism per octopus moving on to the next character that is body cavity already i have told you they are eucoelomate animal they have the true body cavity but their body cavity is highly reduced why is it so because you can find many you know reproductive cavities right even you can also find excretory cavities to also go with pericardial cavities because of the presence of these cavities their body cavity is highly reduced or highly diminished the next character we have is locomotion or locomotory organs which help in locomotion or this is they have a well defined muscular foot which helps in their locomotion okay so remember this further to move with this let us talk about their digestive system see digestive system here it is complete when i say complete remember that they have you know the elementary canal which starts with the mouth and ends with the anus note down one important point here the mouth or the opening which they have in their elementary canal the first opening so this possesses a rasping organ we call this rasping organ as radula okay this radula possesses many chitinous teeth which is important for their in fact the digestive processes okay so digestive system remember is very much complete with respect to the molluscans moving on to understand how does respiration occur here see generally in case of aquatic forms so the forms which live in water the organisms which survive in the fresh water and the sea water here we can find the feather like gills feather like gills we call those as tenidia so which help in respiration okay so generally the gills you know or the tenidia okay they are situated in the mantle cavity i have already told you you know the mantle cavity is present between the body hump and the mantle layer okay so in between that the space is there where we can find the gills uh, you know deposition fine in case of terrestrial forms you know we can find lungs as the important respiratory organs or we can also represent it to as pulmonary sacs okay so locomotion is through muscular foot digestion is complete with uh, starting with mouth and ending with anus in the the mouth uh, has a rasping organ called as radula containing the chitinous teeth respiration in aquatic forms occurs through feather feather like uh, gills called as tenidia and in terrestrial forms it is through lungs or pulmonary sacs dear students next let us move on to the excretory system so when we talk about this they have pair of kidneys for elimination of the nitrogenous waste outside the body or 
bojanus organs or we can say rather are organs of bojanus are also present in some which act similar to in fact uh, the excretory organs or kebers organs so these are the excretory structures which can be present with respect to this phylum okay moving ahead let me talk about the circulatory system here the circulatory system is open type when i say open type of circulatory system we all know that the blood does not flow in the blood vessels that is the arteries veins and the capillaries instead it flows in the body cavity okay here the body cavity or the cello is generally represented as hemocell where the blood freely flows okay this blood has a pigment called hemocyanin so remember so or we can also represent this as the copper pigment right so this is the circulatory system moving on to the sense organs which can be seen with respect to this invertebrate phylum they have eyes okay to go with eyes they have tentacles they are the important sensory organs we all know other than this okay they also possess statocyst when i say statocyst let me tell you they help in maintenance of body balance or body equilibrium they also have special organs here sensory organs called osphradia they are chemosensitive they show sensitivity to chemicals or rather i can tell you that they have chemical stimulus okay so this is with respect to sense organs so now moving ahead let me also tell you about the nervous system here nervous system consists of few pairs of ganglia see ganglia acts as the relay station where one nerve enters and other nerve leaves okay different types of ganglia can be seen here see they have cerebral ganglia all right they have visceral as well to go with the pedal ganglia so these are the major three types of ganglia which can be seen with respect to the molluscans and they also possess nerves along with ganglia so this is the nervous system okay so next let us move on discussing about their reproduction so here when we generally talk about this they we can find that sexes are separate that means to uh, say that they are unisexual organisms the male and the female is separate here okay so here fertilization can be here both internal as well as external all right moving on to the development let me tell you that here they show both direct development as well as indirect development the words we are already well familiar with because we have discussed so many phylums and there we have we have we know what is internal fertilization external fertilization anyway the fertilization which occurs inside the female body is internal which occurs outside the female body is external both can be seen here development direct development is without the larval stages indirect development is with larval stages so what are the indirect uh, uh, you know larval stages we have we have many larval stages like prokofor larva okay or glochidium larva okay or okay then further we can also say veliger as well okay so these are 
the three major larval stages larval stages which can be seen with respect to the phylum the mollusca okay let me tell you excretory organs they possess pair of kidneys okay we know that they are the excretory organs or they can have organs of bojanus or kibbers glands okay or kibbers organs circulation is open type okay so with the blood having the copper pigment called the hemocyanin the sense organs are eyes tentacles stetoscyst and osphradia nervous system consists of few pairs of ganglia that is cerebral ganglia vitreal ganglia and pedal ganglia plus they also possess the nerves reproduction when we speak here they are unisexual organisms or dioecious organisms where sexes are separate so the male and the female is separate fertilization can be both internal and external development can be direct and it can also be indirect indirect form show few of the larval stages here that is the trochophore larva glochidium larva and the veliger larva so these are the few important general characteristics of the phylum mollusca dear students moving on to the classification of the phylum mollusca we have six classes okay which we shall discuss starting from the first class that is monoplacophora okay so this class is a connecting link between the annelid and the mollusk okay so here example can be given as neopilina moving ahead with the second class we have amphinura or polyplacophora see here it shows a larval stage called as trochophore larva see trochophore larva is also present in the annelids right so it can also be present in the case of mollusk in which class in the amphi neora or polyplacophora here examples are ketoplena or what you refer it to as chiton c to go with that we also have lepido pleurus all right so few of the important uh, zoological names and common names can be you know uh, given for your uh, neat examination as well okay so that is where i have included both the zoological name and the common names of few important organisms third class we have here is scaphopoda so here they show veliger larva i have told you three types of larva are shown by the molluscans one is the trochophore larva second is the glochidium larva and the third one is the veliger larva trochophore larva is shown by amphinura veliger larva is shown by scaphopoda all right so here the example can be given as the dentalium or it can also be referred to as tusk shell next fourth class we have here is gastropoda see among all the six phylums which are there in case of molluscans the largest class is of gastropods okay so they have unpaired kidneys at the excretory organs all right see they show the body symmetry which is asymmetrical when i say this i have already told you that they show torsion see torsion in their body can be seen after certain growth in fact when they get the torsion we can say they show the a symmetry their body cannot be divided into two equal half due to the presence of this torsion in their body see few of this uh, class forms show ovo testis that means the male and the repro uh, female reproductive units are combined combined that's what we call ovo testis okay but generally it is only under the class the two few organisms of gastropods show this characteristic here examples are pila so which is a also referred to as apple snail so fresh water okay then we have turbinella so which is shank we refer it to as shank 
aplasia sea hair doris that is also called commonly as sea lemon then limnia or pond snail okay so these are few important examples of the class gastropoda next class we have here is pelycypoda so or it can also be referred to as bivalvia so what is prominent here what are the prominent characteristics we cannot find the head here i told you the body is divided in the case of molluscs into head visceral mass and muscular foot almost in all the phylums you can observe a clear distinguished part called head cephalization can be seen but here with respect to pelycypoda or bivalvia there is absence of the head all right here the excretory organ so this is the excretory organ we call the organ of bajanus all right so i had told you in general characteristics that they may possess kidneys or organs of bajanus or keepers organs as excretory organs say in case of uh, the gastropods we found that unpaired kidneys are present in case of pelycypoda we found that there is excretory organ called organ of bajanus fine which helps in elimination of nitrogenous waste outside the body see next we have cilia of gills you know which uh, is present in this class okay so this uh, cilia which is present along with the gills helps in feeding okay so examples of this phylum are unio which is also called as fresh water mussel okay then teredo ship worm we say then pink teda it is also called pearl oyster remember dear students okay see i have given both the zoological name as well as the common name i am repeating once more note down all these uh, names it is important for the competitive examinations point of view further the sixth class we have here is cephalopoda okay so here the eye which is present in this phylum almost appears like a vertebrate eye okay this is a important feature they have foot the muscular foot which is present on the top of the head which helps in locomotion all right you cannot find any larval stages at all here okay then you have further you know we can also find the fossil remains of cephalopods which are of uh, uh, varied uh, importance okay so examples are sepia which uh, can be commonly called as cuttlefish octopus is commonly called as devil fish loligo is referred commonly also as squid then not one more point here this point see we have archetuthis this archetuthis is the largest invertebrate animal among all the phylums okay so these are the different classes of the phylum mollusca let me repeat they have class monoplacophora okay to go with amphiphora or it can also be called as polyplacophora then scaphopoda gastropoda pelycypoda or bivalvia and finally we have cephalopoda okay so these are six classes please note down all the important points here okay so keep following the, the classes with concentration and attention dear students next phylum we have is phylum echinodermata so let me tell you that the organisms belonging to this phylum are generally referred to as echinoderms these echinoderms are deuterostomic marine eucilomate animals see when i say deuterostomic 
please do remember that here anus is formed first you know before the formation of mouth those types of organisms you know are referred to as deuterostomic organisms so echinoderms are deuterostomes or deuterostomic organisms they live in the salt waters most of them and they have the true body cavity okay so remember here the scientist lucert in fact is responsible for the creation of the phylum called echinodermata and we have jacob klein who is responsible for coining the term echinodermata the organisms that is we can say echinoderms belonging to these animals are referred to as spiny skinned animals there is presence of spines on their body all right this is one point and approximately dear students they have around 6000 species of animals belonging to this uh, phylum that is echinodermata dear students moving on to the general characteristics of echinoderms first let us discuss about their habitat and habit see habitat when i speak they are exclusively marine that means they can be present only in the marine waters they are not present in any other you know habitats all right like they are not also absent in the fresh waters coming to their habit they are bottom dwelling animals they are bottom dwelling organisms so when i say benthos that means to say they generally live almost deep inside the sea all right very deep in fact till the bottom you can at the bottom you can find these organisms all right further let me tell you that they can also be pelagic very few very very few most of them are they you are bottom dwelling but very very limited organisms are you know present floating on the surface of the open waters right or on the surface of the sea or open waters you can find you know them floating very few all right other than this let me tell you they can also be sedentary when i say sedentary it means to say they are generally very slow moving all right or even in certain cases they can be immobile right or moving in their vicinity is what you call it as sedentary very slow moving or immobile or moving in their vicinity is sedentary right their habit is you know benthos bottom dwelling pelagic floating on the surface sedentary that means very slow moving or immobile right so these are what i can say habit furthermore you can refer them to as the free living organisms almost you know all the echinoderms are free living the parasites here are unknown in fact uh, that means to say parasites are generally here not found with respect to the phylum echinodermata right moving to the next characteristic that is body symmetry see here we need to understand okay in two halves one is in the case of adults all right the body symmetry which is shown is radial symmetry all right so with pentamerous body so when i say this their body is divided into two equal halves from any plane passing through the center and it is the body is pentamerous that means it is divided into five equal parts right and further in the case of larvae the body is bilateral symmetry shows 
so that means the body in case of larvae in case of developing stage can be seen as dividing into two equal halves from single pane passing through the center all right so this is with respect to the body symmetry there in fact when we talk about their body body form rather see their body form is as such that it can be in fact divided into the firstly oral surface right then a oral surface all right and they also have central disc all right so oral surface will have the mouth opposite to oral you know just opposite to oral there is a oral surface okay then there is a central disc all right situated situated at the center of the body all right so this is how their body is differentiated into they have all right five radiating arms in them all right so let me tell you they are exclusively marine most of them are bottom dwelling organisms called benthos or they can be free floating as pelagic and they are generally immobile or slow moving organisms most of them so sedentary they they are most of them are free living parasites are not known okay then they their adults show radial symmetry larvae show bilateral symmetry body is divided into five equal halves generally having five radiating arms their body is divided or differentiated into oral aboral and central disc dear students the next characteristic we have is their body organization here they are having organ system grade of organization all right and body wall or gem layers when you speak all right they have all three layers that is they are diploblastic in nature outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner endoderm is present with respect to the organisms belonging to the phylum echinoderms next moving to one more important aspect here that is they don't have head now the organisms belonging to this phylum lacks head and their body is unsegmented cephalization is absent here with respect to echinoderms important point dear students okay then coming to the next that is endoskeleton here the endoskeleton the skeleton is present inside the skin so when at the skin all right there are in fact calcareous plates these calcareous plates are called as ossicles all right they form the endoskeleton and Mm, these endo, uh, in fact, uh, skeleton that is the ossicles have three different uh, structures. Okay, they have tentacles. All right, to go with tentacles, they have spines as well, and pedicellariae. These are the three structures which are associated with ossicles. Here, so spines also are uh, like you know in the. Uh, part of the ossicle okay they are spiny skinned animals let me remind you and they have pedicellariae which is important for clearing debris from the body clearing debris from the body debris here uh, indicates the accumulation of many you know components on their body the waste components or as their bottom dwelling animals many you know forms of debris can fall on them so to clear that debris there is a structure which is a part of ossicle called pedicellaria which helps and also it is important for catching the prey all right so this is about their endoskeleton all right moving ahead let me also tell you about their body cavity or coelom here as i already mentioned they are eucoelomate organisms that means they have the true 
body cavity that body cavity is derived from primitive gut all right the gut is not so well developed here but yet it helps in the formation of the body cavity called as the you know ucilomate cavity dear students next moving on to the water vascular system see this is also called to as ambo lateral canal right so this can be present as the special characteristics here so it's a you know uh, many tubes okay which form this system where water flows through them there are many tubes through which water flows all right so note one point there is one sieve like structure okay we call madreporites so these are the openings through which the water moves inside the body all right and moves through the the canals okay so which form the water vascular system all right so this is a special characteristic which we can find further to go with this let me talk about locomotion here the locomotion is through the organs here called as tube feet not only in locomotion tube feet is also important for respiration as well it is just part of respiration okay but major function is here locomotion then we have digestive system it is complete see it is complete with oral and aboral surface oral surface has more the oral surface has uh, you know generally the uh, other openings for the elimination of waste to go with that let me tell you there are few organisms like brittle stars you know these have incomplete digestion this is an exception almost all the organisms show complete digestion but brittle star shows incomplete digestion digestion is not complete here okay it does not start from the mouth and end with anus in case of the brittle star all right so they have water vascular system or ambo lateral canal where water as well as corpuscles all right are flowing freely okay in the, in the many tubes okay uh, the water moves inside the body through pores called as or the sieves called as madri porites locomotion is through tube feet but they also help in respiration digestion is complete okay incomplete uh, with respect to brittle star next moving on to the respiratory system so here different structures are present which help in the respiration process the body wall helps in respiration to go with that you know dermal branchiae are also present all right i have already talked about tube feet tube feet also help in respiration dear students here okay so further there are you know branchial trees as well okay or respiratory trees we can say cloacal respiratory trees okay which helps in respiration remember four important structures one is the body wall dermal branchiae tube feet and cloacal respiratory tree through which respiration occurs moving on to the circulatory system see dear students they don't have in fact let me tell you the heart and also respiratory pigments so both are absent they are not present here so it is carried out by one of the system here called hemal system which consists of the lacunar tissues all right these hemal system having lacunar tissues performs the role of circulatory system rather we can say 
the circulatory system is not so well developed in compared to the other phylums okay so this is higher phylum all the other higher phylums so most of them have the respiratory pigment and uh, uh, you know other uh, very well developed systems okay but here they don't have heart okay and here it is hemal system that is through lacunar tissues circulation will occur all right so this is about respiratory and circulatory system next character character we have is <coughs> excretory system here it is absent so then if it is absent how does the excretion occur here so it is through a process called diffusion so to bring about diffusion or the elimination of metabolic waste through diffusion there are branchiae right and amebocytes so these are the specialized cells which are present in the coelomic fluid okay the body fluid which is present in that these branchiae and amebocytes are present which perform the excretory function through diffusion process next we have nervous system here it occurs through okay oral okay nerve rings all right then uh, i want to go with this even transverse nerves and radial nerves are also present the these three okay nerve rings transverse nerves and radial nerves work together to perform the role of the nervous system all right then moving on to the reproduction here the sexes are separate that means the male and females can be in fact distinguished easily okay so they they are unisexual organisms to go with that let me tell you that fertilization here is all right external that means the fusion of the male gamete all right and the female gamete occurs outside the female body all right so go with development here next see it is indirect type here that means all the organisms have to pass through the larval stages so what are the larval stages which can be seen here with respect to gonadotomes let us say we have bipinarium okay ophiopleutius echinopleutius all right so these are etc few more we can find so these are the larval stages few of the larval stages which we can find with respect to the phylum echinoderms excretory system is absent it takes place uh, through diffusion nervous system has nerve rings transverse nerves and radial nerves so reproduction here is uh, sexual all right sexual because sexes are separate here fertilization is outside the female body development is indirect examples we have here bipinaria ophiopleutius and we have echinopleutius which are few examples or even you can give for example we also have auricularia and so on so these are the few important aspects with respect to development and let us also discuss about one more important character shown by these organisms is that of regeneration so already i have told you that regeneration is to again reform the lost body part so in fact they have very high degree of regeneration they show two forms here one is autonomy and evisceration so two of the regeneration types can be shown one is autonomy and second one is evisceration autonomy means they these organisms self mutilate all right they cut themselves their body parts or mutilate their body parts 
okay and further they regrow them all right that is called autonomy evisceration so this is one more different type of regeneration where you know the ejection of the intestine complete intestine plus respiratory tree is seen the organism themselves eject eject complete intestine along with the respiratory tree later you know they reform this uh, intestine and respiratory tree these are the types of regeneration which we can find with respect to echinoderms so let us move on to the classification of the phylum echinoderms all right so here let me tell you that most importantly they are classified into five classes okay as first class we have here is class crinoidea so here this is the most uh, primitive class of echinoderms examples are antidon commonly called cirili or neometra commonly called feather star okay so next class we have here is class holothuroidea so contrasting important aspects you know on which basis they are generally classified into okay let uh, i have put across here and which is important for competitive examinations as well see these holothuroid you know organisms does not have spines arms and pedicellariae all right so examples cucumeria and holothuria which are generally called to as the sea cucumbers then third class we have here is class echino echinoidea okay so this echinoidea has one special structure called aristotle's lantern which helps in biting as well as chewing process examples are echinus so which is called sea urchin one more point you need to note here is that in case of echinus the arms are completely absent okay one more examples we have one more example here is sand dollars okay zoologically it is referred to as echino arachinus all right fourth class we have here is ophiuroidea okay here ambulacral groups completely absent okay whereas it is present uh, most of the other classes present okay no doubt but here in this class it is generally absent examples are we have ophiura so which is called brittle star and one more important brittle star had told one more important contrasting feature of this that they have incomplete digestion most of the other organism belonging to this phylum have complete digestion except one of the examples like brittle star which had incomplete digestion then we have ophiotrix which is called as serpent star dear students moving to the last class we have class asteroidea okay so these organisms uh, you know generally have tube feet for locomotion they have tube feet for locomotion then their body aster asteroidea the aste astero it is generally referring us to that star like body okay so larval form here which is present is called bipinaria examples are asterias or starfish and pentaceros or sea star so these are the few important uh, aspects about the classification of the phylum echinoderms keep following the classes with attention and concentration okay thank you very much